to find out uh, what we can expect in this new decade uh, and uh, actually how new business models, uh, new technologies could help uh, uh, to uh, achieve higher security, higher information security and data uh, protection, and uh, maybe what kind of uh, new risks uh, do the technology, these technologies and models uh, uh, bring, and uh, how data protection and information security uh, are related, uh, what are the news uh, related to data protection, and so on. So, uh, we want to get the answer to these questions, and in uh, this mission, uh, our great panelists will help us. So, uh, for the beginning, uh, I'll, uh, I'm inviting uh, the panelists to uh, introduce themselves. I, I'm sure they will do it better than me, so maybe, uh, Anastasia, if you can start. With yeah, your but uh, we expect you to start from <laughs> yourself. <laughs> I will do it at the end. <laughs> okay, anonymous moderator. <laughs> uh, my name is Anastasia. Uh, we already met on the first panel. If not, uh, uh, my surname is Stapenkov, name Anastasia, I'm from Ukraine. Uh, while being a security consultant, I also uh, try to develop my own business and set up a company which name is Simple Security and Compliance. I found out being a consultant for more than eight years in cybersecurity that uh, this area is uh, complicated for companies and they look for simple advanced solutions, but at the same time which will be effective. So my purpose is to find uh, research for these solutions and implement them. I also maintain uh, a blog in LinkedIn and YouTube and met, meet uh, great experts uh, uh, to find this solution. So I would like to uh, have partnership uh, and uh, join, would love to collaborate. And today uh, on this discussion, my uh, mission that I set up for myself is to uh, talk about uh, new trends of new technologies and define what it could bring uh, think with you what it could bring to uh, businesses themselves and security and privacy, uh, how it will impact security and privacy. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia. A big applause for her, <laughs> please. <laughs> and Elaine? So I'm Alain Hermann. I'm a data protection commissioner of Luxembourg from the National Data Protection uh, Authority. Um, I don't know if everyone knows what's the uh, National Data Protection Authority. If you are European, you should know. <laughs> if you don't know, it's bad. For those who are non-European, you, you have an excuse. I think um, we all have <laughs> National Data <laughs> Authority. Yes. Uh, so, uh, in fact, our role is to enforce uh, GDPR uh, mm -hmm. towards uh, public and private sector and organizations. But I think we are going to discuss this a little bit more right now. So, in the Data Protection Authority, I'm more particular in uh, take care about the, um, the investigations teams and the compliance teams. Compliance, we have uh, certification under GDPR, code of conduct, and also uh, data breach uh, notifications. So I do also have a tech background. Uh, I'm coming also from the in information security sector. So I'm one of the few commissioners in Europe who has a tech background. All the other commissioners are more from the legal world. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let's start this discussion. I will try to not be the bad guy here. I know so I say yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you cannot do that. Uh, it's not the case. I do, I do not often say that. I'm more constructive uh, because I think also try to convince you that uh, GDPR and uh, other kind of legislations are also enablers, are also helping to, to create, uh, let's say, more safe, more trusty systems than uh, uh, saying it's not possible. Okay, thank you, Lane. Big applause for. I'm sure that the companies uh, are not so happy to see you uh, because uh, if you are going to audit them. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I will try to, to break this image. It's, uh... Okay, thank you. And uh, finally, at the end, I will say something about myself. Uh, uh, I'm coming from Croatia. I have also a consulting and training company, Zich. Uh, my background, I'm uh, graduated at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science and also uh, got my master's degree and a PhD degree. And I have a lot of these certificates related to cybersecurity, information security, disaster recovery, uh, GDPR, and so on. Uh, also, I'm CISA, Certified Information System Auditor, Project Management Professional, and so on. But uh, we can start with uh, our panel and discussion. As we um, 
mentioned at the beginning, we will start with some new business models, uh, new uh, actually uh, sciences uh, such as uh, data management, uh, data governance that uh, definitely uh, have influence uh, to the information uh, security and data protection. Uh, and from one side, it is very important for, uh, for the companies uh, and they want to use uh, the uh, big amount of their data they have uh, and uh, uh, all of us are interested uh, how uh, this could influence to the information security. We know that uh, data scientists, data analysts are the experts uh, that uh, really uh, are important now uh, and are ve uh, very sought after today. But Anastasia, maybe you could, uh, you could say something about uh, how these uh, companies uh, leverage stored uh, enormous amounts of sensitive data to generate value through these new business models uh, and opportunities while staying compliant with privacy and regulatory concerns. Thanks. Um, we already discussed a lot that uh, data is an oil now in the economic and uh, when the company has an ability to properly analyze its own data, it could obtain an enormous competitive advantage on the market. Today we have different technologies that help this, the companies be, use this data and at the same time be compliant with regulations. Such techniques include anonymizations, different kind of it, and also especially analyzing uh, what data company collect for what purpose and obtaining co consent of the customers. But it will be it's for the future or something changes. Uh, I have read about the trend that the companies that not only use their own data will benefit and be on, on the first range, but also companies who uh, can exchange data between each other and obtain new insights of this data that they exchange. There could be different cases. Uh, it could be uh, like frenemies, friends and enemies, but combined frenemies. Uh, so companies from one industry which could combine uh, each other data and analyze it and obtain both benefits. Even they provide similar services, competitive services for each, like for their customers. And they could collaborate uh, to um, achieve common goals such as detecting over-concentration risk, sophisticated fraud patterns, or financial crimes. It specifically, for example, relates for, for financial actors. So they still could combine the data and obtain benefit. Another way, uh, example of how the data in the future could be combined in the industries if, is when companies complement each other. So they are on different stages of one supply chain and it will be very beneficial for companies exchange this data to obtain more insight about the user on different stages and provide more uh, great uh, customer experience. Such industries could include travel, uh, industry when uh, we see collaboration of uh, airports, uh, uh, travel uh, agencies, uh, hotels and so on and they could exchange data about the customers and provide new great services for them. Uh, if we say about actual exchange of data, we already have seen it uh, current, uh, in current um, situation and uh, this example provides another purpose how the data could be exchanged is for uh, providing better research and having better result when it's really needed and very crucial. For example, healthcare. When COVID um, came, uh, there was a situation when different pharmaceutical companies, they uh, decided to exchange the data in order to be able to uh, create a vaccine uh, in shorter terms. And it was an example of great collaboration, but um, at the same time, uh, this exchange could, po could create some risks. You see the, what kind of data they exchanged, but they agreed to exchange it in some way. They agreed on security and exchange it, and it was beneficial. So this trend of exchanging data will arise next decade. And uh, at the same time, uh, we see that this exchanging, uh, exchanging this data, we need to ensure its security and privacy. And at the same time, what it could be? It, uh, current uh, security controls will be not enough and new technologies emerge and these kind of technologies, they say confidential computing or privacy pre 
preserving computing. There are different kinds of technologies that help to preserve privacy while this data is exchanged between partners, between your frenemies uh, to obtain this insight. I will give you several examples what exist and you can search by yourself with, within your companies to in, uh, find use cases that will be relevant for your company. For example, uh, differential privacy. So it's when uh, data is exchanged, but there is some noise added to the data, and uh, data set is impossible to obtain actual insight what is the actual data, but you still can obtain insight from the data uh, because of that noise, but this noise helps you to exchange and like not allow reverse engineering. Or, for example, uh, functional encryption. So uh, some users, you provide them rights, uh, they have some key, uh, and this key allows them to view some parts of encryption text. So they could not see the whole text, it they could see only a part of it. So we preserve confidentiality of the information and uh, it's possible to share the data. Or uh, federated analysis, parties share insight from the analysis without sharing the data. And it's also possible how we can share and help each other, but not sharing the data, but sharing the insight. There are different kinds of these technologies, confidential computing, uh, it's still a challenge to implement them because uh, how um, now companies uh, mostly uh, try to focus uh, on themselves to preserve boundaries of the data so they still want to keep the data inside the company, not share it outside. So it's, it should be a shift in paradigm how we uh, think uh, whether we can share data with our like <laughs> competitors uh, in order to be able to obtain also benefit from ourselves. It also requires like investments in technologies, in changes into our organization. So uh, it's some kind of problem that exists. And also such technologies could uh, lower the speed uh, of uh, transactions. Now we uh, expect that it will be very fast and we obtain quick insight, but while we need to preserve confidentiality and privacy and use these technologies, it still could uh, like slow uh, the operation and we need to, uh, to handle with it. Uh, thank you, Anastasia. We will definitely talk about technologies and their influence uh, on security a little bit later, but maybe before that, uh, it would be interesting to hear uh, what kind of uh, regulations and legislation we have uh, in the area of data management and actually how that influence on data protection. Uh, yes, I, I will take a little bit more altitude. At the higher <laughs> level. <laughs> so I didn't expect to, to speak about differential, differential privacy. Um, until now in the legislation, so we, we, we had and we still have the GDPR. The GDPR is seen as being quite protective. Uh, so there are quite a lot of requirements uh, to fulfill in order to process data. And it's quite seen as being, um, let's say, making difficult sharing of data, if, even if I don't uh, agree with that. You, you can already share data uh, under GDPR. But now we see a lot of um, a set of new European acts that are coming. We, uh, to mention them, it's for example the Data Act and the Data Covenant Act, which will incite and even in sometimes oblige to make, to share data. And we speak for all data. We speak from personal data and non-personal data. Um, this, this sharing of data will still have to be done in respecting the uh, data protection uh, regulation, which will make the, the, the topic very interesting and very uh, challenging too, uh, because we, are, we will be forced to share data. Public will have to share data with private sector for research, for research in companies, for public research. Uh, there will be companies who can have the, the label as altruist companies, so companies who provide data that they give in an altruistic way to other companies for specific purposes. All those elements are now coming. Uh, also in the world of Internet of Things, uh, there will be obligations uh, to make data um, public or available for uh, a sharing. What does this mean in IT? So as I said, this has to, to remain compliant with data protection regulations here in, in, in Europe. It means that, and, and uh, um, you just mentioned before, it means that there will be techniques 
to, to, to implement like anonymization, pseudonymizations, which are very complex techniques. Doing anonymization is very, very uh, complex. It's something that's uh, still in development. Uh, you will have to raise some questions like, okay, maybe my data set is anonymized. No, it's going to become bigger. Will it still be anonymized in a future way? So it will raise a lot, a lot of, of questions. But that's the way we are going. So we are, we are going from this more closed world to a more open world where with the data and all the challenges, technical challenges, management challenges, governance challenges that is going to, to represent. And of course, uh, companies here in Europe will need to do that or those who process data of people in Europe will do that uh, in remaining compliance with all those regulations. Yeah, and so what's important, we could not uh, hide now this possibility or like uh, close it because we do not know ways how to comply with regulations because like there are a lot of um, inside business possibilities, opportunities to use data and uh, I think this regulation could also um, like the changes that will be made to regulation need to think like not to restrict uh, but enable organization to use but provide different kinds of uh, ways how to do it including using technologies like encryption different types that I mentioned anonymization and others pseudonymization <laughs> but a regulation that's today already in place like GDPR don't restrict from doing that it just says you can do it but respect the rules and uh, it means transparency, it means have a legal basis, it means have security, it means respecting rights of the individual. Uh, it's still possible. Yeah, it's yeah. Possible uh, and, um, maybe there it's not so uh, technically possible and uh, companies still find ways how to do it and sometimes they don't do it because they don't know how to, to implement it properly. That's the point. Knowledge. <laughs> What about technologies uh, such as blockchain that definitely uh, reinventing the way people and companies in interact uh, uh, with each other uh, from how they trade goods, uh, how they transfer assets to how they manage personal information. So uh, blockchain technologies offer several design configurations, applications that uh, can enhance security. But despite all its purported security benefits, uh, blockchain market uh, has been rife with security issues. For example, cryptocurrency-related crimes resulted in more than $14, million, $14 billion in losses in 2021, up nearly 57% uh, from the prior year. So th this begs the question, uh, are blockchains secure by design? or should blockchain uh, use cases be designed for security? Uh, personally, I have not participated in a project related to blockchain implementation, uh, specifically to security in order to improve security, but I have read uh, many uh, cases uh, when this technology could improve security because it could prove identity, it could uh, make transaction more transparent, uh, it could also um, help to uh, like make more clear all uh, supply and chain processes, financial transaction processes, uh, and different new technologies that relate, for example, uh, for electro uh, electronic voting, if we come into a more uh, democracy, the digitalization of democracy, it could prove identity and we better, we could trust such technologies as electronic voting. Or, for example, in healthcare, when we need to prove uh, digital identity more uh, in order to be able to obtain access to our healthcare data, this technology also could be, could be used. Uh, or, for example, contract tracing, or as I mentioned, supplies, uh, supply uh, change process. Uh, interesting example was um, uh, product tracking. Interesting, when you not only uh, track your suppliers on all your supply chain, but also products that were used to create a product, as uh, like, um, that participate inside, so you can uh, analyze from where it uh, was produced, how it's delivered, what was inside, so you can uh, have a lot of possibility in it. Uh, still, uh, companies and research, like there are researchers that said that the blockchain is not uh, so widely adopted, 
I think because companies, uh, especially traditional companies, they not so much understand uh, how uh, they could use blockchain, how they could invest in it, what are use cases, uh, and how they could use this uh, NFT, uh, cryptocurrencies for, for the regular business. It's, it's, for me, it's now still like a separate industry or separate kind of companies who, uh, which experiment with blockchain and there are still be some years when the, 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 this experience will happen and then it will be transferred to more traditional in, uh, industries. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, Alain, uh, do you foresee uh, an evolution of interplay between information security and uh, data protection? Actually, we are talking about black blockchain and delivering services uh, using blockchains and uh, uh, definitely, uh, for example, in health records, a lot of personal, uh, personal identifiable information is uh, also used uh, and uh, transported uh, by pieces in, uh, by this technology. Uh, so uh, we don't care just about information security, but also about data protection. And is there, uh, what is the actually interplay between security and data protection? Mm -hmm. Maybe just before answering that, that question, I just come back to the, um, to the blockchain case okay. and blockchain and, and um, data protection. Um, uh, a difficult couple. <laughs> uh, probably those who know, uh, 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 making blockchain, when you process personal data blockchain, it's a quite a challenge to be compliant with data protection regulation. Why? Because blockchain is usually uh, distributed systems. There are many different actors. But who is responsible for what in the blockchain? And uh, under data protection, you have a controller, a processor. Controller is the one who defines the, the purpose of the processing, who is responsible for what's happening with the data. Processing, processors are uh, processing personal data for, uh, under the instruction of the controller. In a blockchain context, depending on how the blockchain is set up, it can be very difficult. So there you need to, to take very care. It can be very useful, I agree, but it also needs uh, some um, deep knowledge in data protection blockchain to be able to find uh, a, a compliant um, blockchain system. Uh, in that parenthesis, I also mention how do you respect uh, uh, the rights of the individuals in the blockchain context. Do you have an answer? Do you, want to, do you have an answer? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. What is the conclusion then? Is blockchain enough secure uh, and it is secure by itself, uh, by design, or should be uh, developed to be secure uh, for... It's, it's not about security here, it's about um, compliance with data protection. So you, you can... And Legislation. I, 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 mm -hmm. I answer to your, let's say, second part of the question, the interplay between the security and the data protection. Um, you cannot have data protection without security. That's, yes. that's just not yeah. possible. There is, there is always an interplay. You can have security without data protection, but then uh, highly probably your processing will not be uh, compliant. Um, so maybe this is the case, this is the reason why companies do not adopt it widely, because they don't know how, how to comply, especially uh, yeah. in the industries where like healthcare uh, yeah, for the blockchain, I think there is a double problem. The, the first problem, is you mentioned it, is the knowledge about the blockchain technology itself. And the second problem is the knowledge about how to make, let's say, processing which use new technologies or uh, new usage of older technologies like AI compliant. In order to be able to do that, um, all the people involved in those kind of activities in the company need to have quite some good understanding of those two uh, activities, the technology and the data protection part. Because being able to be data protection compliant when you develop something is not only a problem of the legal guy, it's not only a problem of the IT guy or the DPO or whatever. It means people need to know what it is about and they need to have a kind of culture to think about how to develop those technologies with uh, being uh, compliant. But in order to be able to know, to do that, you'll be able to know deeply the subject. Yes. And that's still a challenge for many, many companies. Uh, it's more easily accessible for bigger companies. Uh, for small companies, for startups, it's quite difficult now to achieve 
um, let's say, to, to get all this knowledge and the time to do it also. Yes, at the technological level, uh, legislation and... Uh, it's combined. You cannot, combined. You cannot <laughs> just take them separately. Yes, you cannot definitely. work in silos. Uh, they need to work together. And in order to work together, um, the organizations in, in, and the knowledge in companies needs to be uh, horizontal, transversal. Otherwise... Yes. Uh, and experts from different areas of that. Also, okay. You mentioned artificial intelligence. We already uh, listened to the previous uh, panel, but uh, maybe Anastasia, you can say something. Uh, uh, what are what is actually the possible impact of artificial intelligence uh, technologies on addressing future sophisticated cyber attacks, attacks, but also other emerging technologies. Uh, when I read about uh, artificial intelligence, how it could uh, strengthen uh, security, internal security teams by advancing analytics about uh, threat modeling, about providing more insight from uh, logs, uh, uh, <laughs> there is another like uh, way like. Uh, we need to consider AI that it will be not only used to protect this technology also will be used by uh, malicious people or like uh, companies or groups which want to attack uh, companies. They will also use uh, these uh, artificial technologies. They will also advance their techniques in order to be able to uh, obtain access to company environment, be uh, unadvisable uh, and obtain more quickly access to uh, critical databases and obtain data what they need. So it's uh, very important. Uh, um, and this is a very important point that the companies uh, not like it's nice to have artificial intelligence in trying to adopt it inside the company because it will help to protect uh, in some way, maybe, but they should do this because uh, attackers will do this. And in any other way, you could not protect from such kind of attacks by uh, analyzing manually log information or even using current technologies like CM systems or other analytical system inside. So we need to try to adopt new uh, artificial intelligence for protecting our infrastructure and try different kind of technologies uh, that could help uh, to analyze this data. It's impo especially important because uh, more risks arise and we could not analyze the data by ourselves because for example now more workers m people work remotely and uh, they are not only not enough protected for example they could work from different places unexpected they could work from different devices and it complicates the analysis process of their events that uh, fit our uh, log system because they still could work normally, but we'll do this from unnormal un places, and this will be a false positive. We need, we need to analyze these trends and be able to identify really suspicious events. Uh, the same, like, new...